Oh, guys. Recorded a 20-minute video, and the mic was not recording. GG life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh. Anyway, moving on from that. It is summer now. I have a lot of hay fever, and I'm quite hoarse, so I'm going to make this a quick video this time, because I've just talked for 20 minutes. But anyway, you might be wondering what the heck this is. I'm about to explain that. First off, um, regarding what's happening with Busky, I know I haven't uploaded a video in a while. I'm taking a bit of a break from Busky again, just because, you know, I work on that game so much sometimes that, like, you do need breaks every now and again. It, you just kind of burn out. And I'm not stopping working on it. I'm just, you know, not working on it right now. And so, of course, me being me, I had to, pro you know, I had to program something. So instead, I'm working on this again. Now, this is actually a game I've never showed you before. And by game, I mean game engine. <laughs> um, this is something I worked on between the time when I made the first version of Busky that never kind of, like, finished, the C++ one, the one that took ages, back when I knew very little about programming. Well, games, anyway. And between, you know, the new version of Busky, which I made very quickly and it was all going well. So, sort of between that period, so I was kind of good at programming, <laughs> and I kind of knew what I was doing, but I still was figuring all this stuff out. So, as a result of that, this worked out kind of well, and I went back to it recently, and it's funny, because now when I go back to it, not only am I, you know, better at programming, and I immediately realize all the problems that are, you know, wrong with it that I can fix, but... It's actually cool as well, seeing I kind of knew what I was doing back then as well. I mean, not as good as I am nowadays, but I at least had, like, some idea of what was going on. Like, there's some really nice systems in this game, like the animation system and the, um, some of the collision and everything else. But anyway, on to what this game actually is. So, a lot of you, I'm sure, are familiar with, you know, like, old-school first-person shooter games, like, say, Doom, you know, there's Doom, why can't I think, oh, wait, Doom, Duke Nukem, um, Shadow Warrior, the original one. And, of course, if you were a Mac guy, there was games like Marathon. Because, you know, as a kid, I didn't have a PC, so I wasn't a Doom guy, I was a Marathon guy. And Marathon was basically your poor man's Doom. But, um, well, I, sh I say poor man, I mean, if you had a Mac, you probably wanted a poor man, but anyway. So, basically, I mean, Marathon was a game that Bungie made before they made Halo, so it was still a good game. But it was just quite a different game than Doom, really. It was more story-based, and Doom has no real story. But, um, yeah, so, I always kind of liked those games, though. And I kind of regretted the fact that nobody really makes those games nowadays. Like, they make what they call an old-school shooter, but they don't really make, you know... They don't actually render it like an old-school shooter, you know? I mean, the best examples of that nowadays are the Doom remakes, like Z-Doom and that sort of thing. But they're just trying to remake the Doom engine, really. I really wanted to make something that was kind of like a fairly... Like a really simple, kind of really moddable, like kind of like old-school FPS that, you know, like... You could put it out there as a basic game and just say, look, make what you want of it, and people will make, you know, their own versions of it. Because, I mean, the plan for this game is to basically have it so moddable that you could, you know, very quickly and easily by adding a few, you know, you know, few text files and a few graphics, you could add weapons, you could add mobs, you could add power-ups, all sorts. And, of course, it would be a map editor as well. So, like, that should be very nice. And so I was kind of going at that for a while. Now, I mean, when I made this originally, it took me quite a while because I was still kind of learning and I did kind of burn out on it. That's why I stopped for a while. And then, for whatever reason, I had the insane idea of making Busky again. And that time, I mean, as you know, this time it actually worked out, and so I made, you know, Busky pretty much start to finish. And, yeah. So, I mean, coming back to this now, though, it's really nice because most of the hard work was done anyway. But as well, a lot of the few, like, you know, big problems I had, I now look at them and go, oh, I know how to fix this now. Like, back then I hadn't got a clue, but now I'm like, I actually know how to fix that. So, yeah, I've actually fixed a lot of the big problems that it had. Like, it had some serious issues with the texture alignments. It still has some, you can see, but that's just basic stuff. But, like, here's a door here, and if I use this door, it used to it used to be aligned the wrong way, and the textures were all wrong, and, like, it kind of, like, it just looked wrong when it opened. It was weird. But, um, but that's all fixed now. And, yeah, and also I'm still doing some stuff, like the... I suppose I'll go into the sectors and all later. But, anyway, essentially what this is, it's an old-school first-person shooter game. It's obviously not a game right now, but it's an engine. But it's got a lot of what it needs to be one of those games. I mean, there's only a few things left to really do now, apart from the map editor, which is a big deal. That, you know, kind of, like, finish the engine. And once that's done, it's, you know, all down to, you know, making content. Now, content is not that easy, so that might take a while. <laughs> because in a game like this, you know, everything's a 2D sprite, so... You've either got to render it in 3D, which is awkward as hell. Or you can, you know, draw it in 2D, but then you have to draw it from, like, a bunch of different angles. And it's really annoying. Like, you might notice that... I mean, in these games, they obviously had no 3D graphics, you know? So what they did was... Say this gravestone, yeah? Like this kind of like crucifix. If they wanted that to be 3D, instead of, you know, 
like having an actual 3D model in the game, what they would do is they'd make a 2D sprite that always faces the camera. It's what they call a billboard sprite. And then what they would do with that is they'd make it so that when you move around it, it actually changes the sprite. So like it shows a different angle. So they're all pre-rendered like from, so you have basically eight different sprites that make up one, you know, view of this thing. And so if I run around, it looks like it's 3D and I'm running around it. I mean, sort of. But it's actually not 3D at all. It's just a 2D sprite. It's as 2D as these things right here, you know? It's just that it's facing me, so it looks more 3D. And yeah, I mean, obviously the gun and all is just a 2D sprite and everything. And I mean, the world itself is in 3D now. But then again, that's because I rendered this in OpenGL, whereas like the original games were done in, you know, like they were ray traced. There was no 3D back then. So they were insanely difficult to make. I mean, John Carmack's pretty much a god. Um, but like nowadays, it's very easy to make something like this. Like it's it's quite handy. Like rendering, it's no problem. The hard part is actually just doing the collision and stuff. And as you can see, if I like shoot the wall here, that the ray, you know, the collision works quite well. So like, I my bullet hit is just like a, a square, but you can at least see where they're shooting. And you can aim up and down and stuff, and it all works. And I can shoot that as well, but it'll look weird because it's not supposed to stay there, and it does right now. Yeah, but yeah. And I mean, like, there's enemies and all implemented. There's, like, I think power-ups and items and stuff. There's the weapons and all work. They reload and everything. There's just no really, you know, graphics for anything yet. But a lot of the stuff is in there. And um, you'll notice they even have this nice little bob animation as I walk. <laughs> it's kind of cool. But yeah, so, I mean, it's it's aiming to be very basic, but at the same time kind of fun in that it's very basic and very fast-paced. I mean, the walk speed now will probably double when I actually, you know, release it. And in terms of what the engine can do, it's got, like... It's very similar, to, I mean, obviously, I modeled this after Marathon and that sort of thing, because that's what I was used to. But it has a lot of, you know, like, switches in the walls which activate things. If I hit the switch here, it turns the elevator over there. And, like, the elevator just goes up and down. Of course, you can just activate things manually, or you can have them activate when you get close to them and that sort of thing. So it can do a lot of stuff, and it's quite an advanced engine. The problem now at the moment is that, like, obviously there's no map editor, so I have to make the maps up in code, which is kind of a pain in the ass. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's running well. And, I mean, like, performance-wise, I'm not sure if I mentioned, because, again, I have recorded this twice, but when this game is not V-Sync to, like, it is right now, it runs at, like, 1,200 FPS. So, like, that is fantastic. The biggest problem with Busky was trying to get the frame rate up. I will not have that problem with this game at all. It runs insanely fast, even on a, like, you know, half-decent machine. I guarantee I could run this on my netbook with no problems. So, yeah, that's really cool. I'd love to make a game for once that everyone can play, you know? So yeah, I mean, I'm sure I had other things to talk about, really, but it, it, it's terrible when you record a video again, because you forget everything. Um, if I've left out anything really obvious, do tell me. Um, I mean, as for what the game's coded in, it's written in C Sharp and OpenTK, so it's basically the same as Busky. But I did consider porting it to SDL, purely because in SDL it's much easier to draw 2D stuff. 2D and OpenGL can be kind of a pain in the ass, and if you've played Busky and seen the font, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, like it, it probably won't matter. I think I'm better at it nowadays, but I might end up porting it to STL at some point. It won't make a difference in the game anyway. But um, but yeah. Oh dear God, it's it's so very warm here, and the hay fever is so terrible. Why weather? Why? I live in a cold country. This is not supposed to happen. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so yeah, I mean, like for the most part, that's kind of it. I might actually go into debug mode for a second just to show you how the sectors and all work to kind of explain how the world is actually constructed. Because I mean, this looks 3D right now, but this world is basically made up in 2D. And then has some fancy stuff done to make it look 3D. Um, so yeah, let me just... I'll do that now. Okay, we're back. And we're still recording. And this is so much talking now. I'm way too hoarse today for this. But anyway, um, so as you can see now, what's actually happening is whenever I look at one of the... You know, the, what I call... These are called quads, by the way. In like GL, a quad is basically like a square. You know, it's got like four, four sides. Although it doesn't necessarily have to be square. Um, so that's a quad, that's a quad, and the floors are quads, and that sort of thing. And what you might notice is that even though this floor is the... In fact, no, hang on, let me let me restart. Basically, the world in this game is made up of what are called sectors, right? A sector, you can think of it like the floor, because it's, it's done in 2D from a top-down perspective. So consider the floor as a sector. And what you do to make a 3D world is you basically make a sector. For example, say this, like, this kind of lift part here, you know? You can see that's a few quads, and they all make up one sector. So what happens there is that I define like in 2D like what the dimensions of the sector are, and then I say what the ceiling and the floor height are, and that kind of then makes up like this you know 3D you know not cube but block thingy you know <laughs> words and things, and yeah so I mean like that's that's all done and then like the sectors themselves 
if a sector is on its own, it just has like, you know, four walls, but when it's connected to another sector, it opens up the wall automatically, and so it forms like a level that way, you know? So you can see this, like, floor is not made of one sector, it's a whole bunch of sectors. The main reason for this right now is, I mean, obviously, currently all the sectors are quads. This is not supposed to happen, and this will change. I'm changing that right now, in fact. They should be polygons, but right now they're just quads. When I made this game at first, I didn't think I'd be able to do polygons, but now I'm like, oh, polygons are easy. <laughs> so, yeah. And um, so, to clarify, this is a quad, this is a polygon. Well, actually, I think, has that got four points? Oh, actually, that is a quad, technically. It's got four points. But it can have, like, five, six, or seven, or whatever. And that would make it, you know, a polygon. So, I mean, like, what's nice about the polygons is that, like, when you're actually making maps, it's a lot less, you know, code to put in. It's a lot less rooms to add. Because, like, this one whole room is actually, like, a whole bunch of, like, quads. Like, even this floor part here. There's that one big quad. In fact, I'm going to, you know, no clip here so I can show you. Ah, God, I went through the ceiling. <laughs> so, that big, like, that whole floor there, like, that's one quad. Then that part there is another quad. And then this part here is another quad. It's kind of like a bendy one. So, like, it's three different quads just to make up that one room, you know? Whereas with polygons, they would all be just one polygon, and that would make it much easier. So, yeah. So, again, to clarify, like, the world is made up of sectors, and then sectors, all the walls are, you know, quads. Yeah, that makes some sort of sense. Apart from the floor and ceiling, but yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't have to understand this, trust me. It's, it's fairly... I'm talking about stuff that I've done in the code, but, you know. It's just for people who are interested that have done GL stuff that might know. Um, and yeah, and like these green lines are the normals. Some of them are actually pointing the wrong way, but that's just because of the way it's done right now. I'm going to fix that. Um, it doesn't actually matter for the terms of the physics, but I really want to make it work right. Like you can see this wall here, the normal is actually on the wrong side. That shouldn't be the case. I just accounted for it in the physics, but I shouldn't have to do that. So I'm going to change that. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, everything works. Like if you run around, like, you know, you collide perfectly with the world. It's really nice. Like, that's the the biggest problem in any 3D game, is just the collision, you know, getting the damn physics right. Because it's wrong in so many games, and it's really annoying. And I mean, it can kind of ruin a game. Like, I even remember there was a game... But, like, they had this issue where if you went up, like, close to a wall, like, in, into a corner like this, you would kind of glitch back and forward. And that's common in games, but it's very easy to fix. It's just that if you're not, you know, familiar with these sort of things, it can happen. And, I mean, I'm sure they probably just saw it and thought it doesn't matter. It's not going to really matter for this game. But for this game that I'm making, obviously, like, it has to be pretty perfect. So I'm really anal about the physics. They have to be perfect. So, um, yeah. And we're back. Sorry, I had a minor, minor coughing fit that time. The hay fever is really getting to me now. So that's my body telling me to stop talking. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, finish this up fast. I just wanted to show you one more thing. This is actually one of the glitches in the physics, but it's really kind of funny in a way. It's what I call the platform nine and three quarters effect. <clears throat> because from what you can see, like, obviously the physics work quite well here. You know, I can just walk around and it works quite well. However, there is one kind of strange thing with the physics where if you have an angle in the world, which is, it's an open angle and it's more than say 90 degrees. So, you know, you see this angle here, it's, it's like, I don't know, 110 or something. If you have that, there is a small chance that it can cause this effect. Like, even this technically counts. But it's it's due to a weird kind of, like, issue with the physics I didn't realize. Because it's so rare for it to happen. But when it happens, you're like, oh, I need to fix that. So I'm working on fixing that now. But it's, it's kind of funny because basically what it means is that, like, if I obviously, you know, run up and down here, it doesn't matter. Like, you can see this wall works fine. But if I go to this, like, angled wall, because it's between two... It's actually between three sectors... Like that's, a, like, that's one sector, that's another sector. On the floor, it's actually three different sectors. Due to the way the collision works, there's this really specific thing where if you run exactly in between the things, like, at exactly the right angle, you will literally phase through it. And it's really, like, Harry Potter type stuff. It's weird. So I'm going to try this. It doesn't always work because it's hard to get it exactly right, but I'm going to try it. It's easier in debug mode because I can see the seam in the walls. So, you ready? This might make me look like an idiot if it doesn't work, so... <laughs> hopefully... Hopefully I can reproduce this. Ah, I moved my thing. Ah, hang on. I have to realign. Realign. Oh, God. My mouse is not the best for this. I have a really crappy mouse. Oh, God. Why is this so hard? Ah, oh, come on. Why, Jeebus? Oh, God. Come on. I, I've been doing this all day. It's peer pressure now. I can't. I can't. Oh, wait. I think I've got it. Okay, ready? Three, two, run! Run! Oh, it worked! It's like magic! <laughs> and I'm outside the world. Yeah, it's, it's really silly. 
But um, so I'm just gonna no clip here so I don't fall like into oblivion. But um, but yeah. So like that is the effect. It is. It's actually quite hard to reproduce. Like a lot of times I try that even in the recording, I didn't get it. It was really kind of silly. So obviously like you know this way. It, like, it, it wouldn't even be a big deal if it was in the real game, but, like, I'm the kind of guy, I would hate it if it was there. I know some guy on YouTube would find it and would annoy the crap out of me, so I'm going to fix it. I know how. And it has to do with fixing the normals and stuff, and kind of, like, forcing the way the, the collision works. But, yeah, like, finicky stuff like that is the sort of thing I spend a lot of my time doing. But, yeah, so, like, now we're outside the level. You can actually see, like, how simple the level is. Um, in fact, if I can actually activate that switch from the outside, which I think I can... Um, oh wait, can I not? Wow, I'm really. I actually checked. You have to be facing from the right direction. That's interesting. <laughs> I got some input in my console there. It's like, uh, oh hi, I'm a map sector. My error messages are kind of silly. Um, so yeah, now now they're actually outside. Like that's the lift we're looking at here, which looks normal from here. But when you go outside, you actually see that there's no physical lift. The world itself actually warps the floor, so the floor moves upwards. It's a really like it was common back when they did those games. It's it's actually a harder way to do it. But it's kind of cool in a way. The only issue is that you have to spend a lot of time aligning your textures correctly, which is a pain in the ass. That's one thing I fixed when I came back to this game. Because previously, when I like used the door and stuff, the texture was aligned to like the top, so it kind of like ate away the textures and moved up the door. It was kind of strange. Whereas now they, they actually work correctly, you know? So that's cool. But, um, but yeah, so that's just that. I wanted to show that off. And that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, there's not much else to show off. If I just want a no clip here. And I feel like I should probably end this before my throat just gives in and just I die. So yeah, I mean that's pretty much everything. I think I've talked about everything. If I've missed anything really obvious, do tell me in the comments. I'm sure you will. And yeah, I'll probably make more videos as time goes on. I just wanted to make at least one video to kind of show this off. And that's why I really quickly made these textures in like a day. They're literally these are literally busky textures reused. So like that's the brick texture just recolored brown and like that's the grass texture <laughs> is making this nice blue carpet. So yeah. But this is, guys, this is what you have to do, you know, when you're making the video games. So, um, so yeah. I just want to make this video just to show it off. And I'll make something probably, when I have more stuff in it, like enemies and stuff, I'll show it off again. And just, you know, show off some actual shooting and things. Um, I did show the shooting, didn't I? I'm sure I did. Oh, yeah. You can see in debug mode, you can actually see the actual trail of your bullet. It's really cool. Like, that's the raycast. These bullets are raycasted. Some people will hate that, but actually it's better. I don't care, you're wrong, it's better. But, um... I'm gonna have physical projectiles as well for like some of the other weapons. So like you'll have things like this and then like energy balls and stuff which are physical project yeah projectiles. <laughs> but yeah. So now that my throat is completely giving in, I think I'll say Thank you guys, thank you for watching as always, and good day. Actually one more thing. I just realized quickly that um through that entire video I kept walking by the elevator and never actually went up the elevator, and I'm sure that will drive some people insane, so here you go. We're on an elevator. It's amazing. You have a bit of step height as well as so can get up there. But yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. Just thought I'd show it off. And there is gravity, but it's kind of like marathon gravity right now. It's quite slow. <laughs> but yeah. So that's pretty much it. Apologies for the video if it was in any way shaky. The frame rate is normally perfect. It's like 60, but fraps tank... Like, fraps are, I only record 30 because YouTube can only take 30 anyway. So it ends up being pretty choppy that way. And fraps just lags the thing, everything, so... But yeah, I mean, it runs much smoother when you actually play it yourself. And apologies if I shook the camera too much, that just tends to happen. I mean, this is me. You're used to me. Or if you couldn't understand what I was saying, because, you know, me. <laughs> Alright guys, so again, for reals this time, and a good day!